Hello everyone, welcome to Unit 1 Lesson 8 for Computer Science Principles where, as promised, we're going to be talking about colour images. So yesterday's lesson, or last lesson, we spoke about black and white images. Well, today, you know, we don't live in a black and white world, so today we're going to be taking a look at colour images. So warm-up question for you, rhetorical question. How many different shades of the colour blue can you name? How many do you think there are in total? So, how many different shades of the color blue? Well, dark blue, light blue, navy blue, royal blue, turquoise, kind of a blue, kind of a green mix. Um, sky blue. There's lots of blues, and you know how you perceive a color as well. And you, everybody sees colors slightly differently. Um, what somebody might think of blue might not might be more of a green for somebody else. So, you know, there are pretty much an infinite number of blue shades. You know, and I I don't know how many there are in total. I'm going to say infinite. So, infinite number of, of blue shades in total. So, today's activity, we're going to be looking at the pixelation widget, the color pixelation widget. So, let's go over to the, well, this is what we have in, uh, for this lesson today. So, lesson eight, color images. We have a PowerPoint presentation that I'm taking you through now. We have a YouTube video that we're going to be watching in a little bit. Uh, here's the link for it if you're unable to get to it through the, the uh, recording. Um, you can click on it here to watch it. And here's the link to code.org that we're going to be using today. So over in code.org, let's go down to lesson eight. And let's take a look at, well, let's do an overview here. So let's go take a look at RGB color first. So RGB is red, green, blue. So when we make colors on a computer screen, or you'd see this in lighting as well, um, basically we use the three primary colors, red, green, blue, and we use them to different intensities to create any of the other any any kind of color you could ever imagine on a screen so when you look at a computer screen every color you see on there is made up of red green and blue values with different intensities specified for each value so last lesson we used one bit for each pex pixel that meant we only had two choices for each pixel so uh, when the bit was off, it was black, so the light was off. When it was set to one, the light was on, and we had a white pixel. So for RGB, red, green, blue color, we're gonna be using three bits for each pixel. Each bit will control a different color. So we've got red, you would set the red bit to one, green to zero, blue to zero, and we've got a red. So turning on just the red bit makes the pixel red. To so green, we turn the green bit on, and it makes it green. And then it doesn't show you it here, but obviously the third option is blue. So we'd turn only the blue bit on and we'd make blue. So with three bits, this means we'll have eight choices of color for each pixel. So let's see if we can make all eight colors on the next level. So let's go ahead and continue here. So this is our intro into color pixelation. If this is going to play. In this version of the widget, we've made setting the metadata of the image a bit easier. For the width and height, you can type the decimal numbers you want, use the sliders, or type the binary as you did before. It's useful to be able to change these things quickly to see the effects on the image. Notice when you change the data by typing or using sliders, the binary data changes and the image canvas reflects the changes. There's another piece of metadata here called bits per pixel, which will allow us to make more than purely black and white images as we did before. To see what it does, let's set bits per pixel to one, which is what we had for black and white images before and let's paste in a familiar black and white image. In order for a pixel to have a range of colors, it seems logical that we will need several or many bits to represent the color of each pixel. 
The bits per pixel setting in the metadata tells the widget how many bits it should use to calculate the color of a pixel. You can see if I change the bits per pixel setting, the widget will interpret the bits differently and you'll see some colors start to appear. Of course, the binary data for this image was written for a black and white image with one bit per pixel. But if we change how that data is interpreted by increasing the bits per pixel that the widget is expecting to see, the image gets garbled. Let's start over and try to get the hang of using color in digital images. I'm going to make a very small image so that we can really look at what's happening with the pixels. So I'm going to set the width to four and the height to two. Now let's look at how RGB colors work with this tool. As you know, for color images, each pixel is actually a combination of red, green, and blue light. If we want to represent that in binary, the least we can do is allocate three bits for each pixel, one bit each for the red, green, and blue values. I can use the slider to set the number of bits per pixel I want to use to render the image. So I'm going to set the bits per pixel to three. So now with three bits per pixel set, it means I can control the amount of red, green, and blue light that goes into each pixel. As before, if I turn all the lights off, I'll get the color black. And if I turn all the lights on, I get white. Since I have one bit of control for each of the red, green, or blue lights, I can turn them on and off individually. So if I want a red pixel, I can turn on the red light and turn the green and blue lights off. So that's red on, green off, and blue off. One, zero, zero. And presto, I get a red pixel. Now you keep going and create a green and a blue pixel. Notice that when we have three bits per pixel, the first bit controls the red light, the second controls the green light, and the third controls the blue light, R, G, B. Now it gets interesting. What happens if we mix the lights? Let's see what happens if we turn on the red light and blue light and leave the green light off on the same pixel. Before I type it, make a mental prediction. What color do you think we'll get if we mix red and blue? Think about it for a second. All right, ready? Here we go. Red on, green off, blue on. It made pink. Is that what you were predicting? I'm guessing that you thought we might get purple. Well, this is one of the key differences between mixing light and mixing paint. It's actually the opposite physical process. When you mix a lot of paint together, the color gets darker and darker. When you mix a lot of light together, the color gets brighter and brighter. It can take some getting used to, but you'll get the hang of it. With only three bits, we know that I can only combine them eight different ways. So with three bits, only eight colors are possible. Now you keep going and finish the remaining two colors. So in case you weren't able to watch that video, I'm going to go and paste that link into uh, code.org here, uh, sorry, into uh, Google Classroom as well. Um, so let me go and put that in here before I forget. So I'm going to add a new link. And there we go. Okay, so Puzzle three of 10, color pixelation, task one. Can you make all unique colors using just three bits? And they've done the first two for us. So try turning on more than one bit at a time. And you saw that in the, in the video there. Now, um, it looks like we are back to having to specify our canvas size here, which is the first. Ah, it is, so the canvas size, so we've got X. So the width is four, height is two, and then the next um, byte, can, uh, sorry, the next, the next, yeah, the next byte that uh, contains the number of pixels we're using. So, so our image starts here. So they've done the first two for us. So one zero zero. I mean, if it was me, I wouldn't have started with that. So actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this way. So I'm going to start counting in binary. So it's going to be 000, 001, 010, 011. 
one zero zero one zero one 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 zero one 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 so those are the eight different colors that we can use um, I think that pink looks more like purple but you know like I said everybody's vision is slightly different um, so hopefully you were able to get all eight colors so let's continue on so continue to the next stage so more shades of color so now let's use two bits to control each color of the light it will make six bits in total for each pixel so we've got the ability to specify different values for red so in this instance we've got dark red zero one for the first for the red pixel uh, for the red you know the red pixel, red color we can say red pixel one zero Oh, we can say bright red pixel one one. So let's continue on. And again, if this video, if you can't see this video, I'll copy the link and I'll paste it into Google Classroom as well. So that's the basics of RGB color. Now, of course, you're asking, how can I make more in different colors? Well, the answer is that we must use more bits per pixel. Let's get rid of the image data we just created and then change the image to be four pixels by four pixels and six bits per pixel. Now, let's try to make a red pixel by turning on just the red light. Since I have six bits per pixel here, that means that I have two bits to set each of the red, green, and blue light. So. That means the amount of red light is now a two-bit setting instead of a single-bit setting like the last time. The largest two-bit number I can make is one, one. So let me try that. Red on, one, one. Green off, zero, zero. Blue off, zero, zero. Hey, look, it's our old friend, the red pixel. Now comes the fun part. Since the red light of the RGB value has four possible settings, Let's try each of them out and put the pixels next to each other to see the differences. Now, let's add more pixels with different amounts of red. We've got red at 1, 1. Let's do the next one. 1, 0 for red, then zeros for green and blue. Now, how about 0, 1 for red, followed by zeros for green and blue. And finally, 0, 0, oh. That's just black again, makes sense. So with a two bit setting for red, it means I can set the brightness of the red light to four different levels, which are different shades of red. To make more colors, you just continue to mix different intensities of red, green, and blue light. Why don't you try some color mixes? Six bits per pixel, can you make your favorite color? Okay, so let me go and Add this link to the lesson eight. Um, edit. And add a link. There's a link. Okay, so back to code.org. Okay, so pixelation task two. This time we use two bits for each color channel, which means six bits per pixel. Uh, we've done the shades of red for you, so the video we just saw, uh, they covered the red. So you're going to head and do this. You're going to go ahead and do a similar pattern for the green and the blue in the last two rows. So I'm going to give you a minute to take a look at doing that. Um, pause the video, and then once you've completed it, uh, come back and we'll continue on. Okay, so we've got our red, green, and blue. So First of all, you know, it's going to be zero, 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 zero again, zero, 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 zero. So we're going to do be green. So we're going to turn red off. So it's going to be off for the red. Green is going to be zero, one. And then blue is going to be zero, zero. And then we're going to do again zero, zero. And then for green, we're going to do one, zero. 
and then zero zero for the blue. And then again, it's going to be zero zero for green, and then one one. Uh, sorry, zero zero for red, one one for green, zero zero for blue. So we've got our black, dark green, green, bright green, or light green. And then blue, it's going to be the same thing. So we're going to start off with all zeros. And then we're going to say zero, 0, for red, 0, 0 for green, and then 0, 1 for blue. And the next one's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And the next one's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Black, dark blue, blue, light blue, upright blue. So hopefully you're able to figure all that out. Let's continue on to the next one. Next stage. So color pixelation task two, where are we at? Yeah, we're gonna do levels two to six. All right, so puzzle six of 10, task two. Let's gain even more control by using three bits per color this time, or nine bits per pixel. Again, we've done the red row for you. Your job is to complete the shades of green and blue. Right, so go ahead, you, know, you use the template there that we got for red. Go ahead and add green and add blue. Pause the video and then come back and continue on when you're ready. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I mean, they're all gonna start one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. 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 It's, no, I'm not gonna do that because it's it's gonna read on. Okay, let's do it this way. So we've got three bits per uh, per color now. Um, so you can see here for red, we started with one two, three, oh, four, five, six, seven. So we're gonna do, um, so red is zero, zero, zero. Then green is gonna be zero, zero, one, and then blue is zero, zero, zero. And it's gonna be zero, 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 one, zero, Zero zero zero. Now it's gonna be zero 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 one one zero zero zero. And it's gonna be zero 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 one zero 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 zero. And then it's gonna be zero 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 that one zero one zero 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 and then zero 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 one one zero 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 one 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 zero zero zero. You can see and we basically just copied the same binary for red we copied it into the green and if you if we just look at those three bits individually what we did was we started off with zero and we just counted up in binary zero one two three four five six and seven so same for blue then so let me zero 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 for red zero 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 for green and then one for blue which is oh uh, which is zero zero one and then again, red, green, and then blue is going to be two, which is zero, one, zero. And then red, zero, 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 green, zero, zero, zero. And then uh, blue is going to be three, which is zero, one, one. And then we're going to do zero, 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 uh, one, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, 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 one, one, one. So there's our Shades of green and shades of blue. So going back to our presentation here. So we've been through pixelation widgets, colors levels two through six. Levels seven through eight. So try your best to match the colors using the widget and reproduce the gradients. Don't worry if it doesn't ex match exactly. So let's go back here, let's continue on. to lesson seven. So more shades of color. Pick a section from one of the images below. Use sampling to match the color pattern as best as you can using the widgets on the next level. So let's continue on and see if we can do this. All right, so let's see if we can take a sampling from a piece of one of the images from the previous level. Try your best to match the colors using the widget and reproduce the gradient. Don't worry if it doesn't match exactly. 
Remember you can adjust the settings of the widgets using the sliders so you can experiment with using even more bits per pixel. Alright, so... <clears throat> Where's our images are here? Okay. So, go ahead and pick a sample of one of these. And here yeah, we're currently set to 9 bits per pixel. <clears throat> so that's 3 bits for red, 3 bits for green, 3 bits for blue. You can increase that if you want. Um, you can increase your image width and your image height as well to increase the sampling uh, size of the image. Um, so go ahead and have a play with that. You know, pick one of these and then come back and you know, pause the video and then come back once you've once you've done that. Okay, so let's take a look at the it looks like perhaps a washed out sea um, picture. So nine bits per pixel. We're really interested in blue here. So everything we do is going to be um, zero for the red and zero for the green. So zero, zero, zero for red, zero, zero, zero for green. And then for blue, we can say, so we'll start off with zero, zero, zero. Zero, 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 zero. Whoa. Oh, there's one. It's 7 p.m. Zero, 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 one, zero. Electronic devices away. Zero, 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 one, one. Zero, 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 one, zero, zero. Zero, 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 one, zero, one. Zero, 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 one, one, zero. And zero, 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 one, one, one. Okay, so what do we have here? So all of those are still a lot darker than what we have there, really. So how do we increase the blue? It's like we need a little more white in there. So... Um, So let's maybe increase the bits per pixel to two. Say 12. So what would that look like? So that's going to be four bits per color now. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Zero 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 zero. Uh, I'm gonna let me do this. Zero 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 zero. Zero zero one zero. Zero 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 zero. Zero 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 zero. Ah, we're out of zeros here. One two three four. One two three four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One two three four one two three four oh one two three four 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 and it's uh 
Did we miss something there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, I've got to increase this, don't I? Uh, so it needs to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I guess if we'd started with 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that would be our, so those are our 16 colors. So we're going to have to make that image height 2 to get everything in there. So those are our 16 shades of blue that we have. So it looks like we need to start in adding some white into here. Uh, and remember, white is going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now let's make this. Um... Okay, so there's a white. So let's start adding some other colors in here to try and increase the, uh, make it more of a lighter colored blue. So remember our red is, so what would it look like if we had zero red? That's it, yeah, that's a, kind of a light turquoise there. So. What if we added a little bit of red to that? Zero, 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 one, 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 one. These are all more of a turquoise color, really, aren't they? Um, all right, well, I guess it's all because it's on. Um, so if we, now it's more the purple, isn't it? So, um, kind of getting there. So we've got the, the turquoise bit. Uh, what if we do this instead? That's more of a white, isn't it? That is, that's getting close to it there. So that's more of a, what if we, that's more of a dark, darker blue, slightly darker. Um, so probably more of a this one. So we could say this, uh, and then if we do a zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, 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 one. Yeah, that's too dark, isn't it? So let's do this one. That's really quite a light blue there, isn't it? A little light to the what I expect though. So I think we've got some of those in there. So I think that's a good example of building out the 
white kind of light blue from the first image. Uh, so let's take a look at the next image, which is purple, yellow kind of mix there. So um, right, so that's yeah, that, that's kind of purple, bright kind of purple at the top there. Um, so how do we lighten that to more of a white? Uh, we probably want to do... What does that look like? That's more of a light. Yeah, that's getting there. So this pink here is kind of looking like this area here. Um, so that's the color we put there. So that's our first set of colors here, the <clears throat> the uh, blue and the turquoise kind of color. Then we've got kind of the pink, purpley, kind of really light pink for here. How do we build yellow? Um, no, that's blue. There you go, so red and green make yellow. And that's really quite a bright yellow at the bottom there, so how do we darken that yellow a little? Um, let's make, no, let's, well, let's try it here. That's slightly darker yellow. So as you can see, we're adding other colors to change uh, to a affect the intensity of the yellow. So we're going from pink to really light pink to kind of a yellow here. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the one at the bottom here has lots of red, some orange and some purple in there. So the red one's going to be there's our bright kind of red. <clears throat> then we've got an orange, which is going to be probably closer to um, now which one well this one was kind of a yellow, so this one. No, well, of course, red and green make orange, don't they? I do just red. No. What if we put a one in there? Well, that's kind of a lighter yellow. That makes orange. Ah, there we go. So we got more of an orange color going on here. Um, red, orange, and then purple. Uh, I think purple was. Um, I missed a one. There's a purple. Okay, and then a black. So. Blacks and the greys, we know without all the lights turned off. That's a black. So how do we line that up a little bit? So we've got black at the bottom here. And then we kind of got silvers. So we could do a... What does that look like? It's going to be more of a black again, isn't it? Uh, let's make it one. 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 All right, so there's a gray. 
Okay, so that, that's that's how we're going to build out the various samples from those images. Um, I've increased the bits per, per pixel to 12, which means the RGB values each have four bits each. Uh, you can increase those if you want. Uh, let's continue on to our next stage. Um, so we did lessons seven and eight. And a wrap up, what happens at each level of creating a digital color image? Think binary. So we added an extra binary bit at each of the levels, um, which gives us more a more wider range to specify the values for that intensity. So you know if, if you think of one as being full level for that color and zero being um, off for that color. So let's say red, for instance, one set to one for red zero would the red would be off if we've got two binary uh, bits now we can set the um, value of zero uh, which is binary zero zero uh, one which would be zero one two which would be one zero and then three which would be one one so with the, the ability to say zero one two or three which gives us a, a wider range of intensity to specify for that value so that's basically uh, the answer to that. So what happens at each level of creating a digital color image? We're increasing the binary range for each of the colors, allowing us to specify a wider range of color for that particular value, a wider value for that particular color. So layers of abstraction in color images. So a digital image layer, so displays a digital approxima approximation based on a sampling of an analog image. Sampling layer, samples of equal size are read from the analog image and assigned to pixels. We have a pixel layer. Each pixel is represented by a red, green, and blue light. And we've got a binary layer. The red, green, and blue values are represented using a sequence of binary numbers and sent out via electrical, sim electrical signals. So we've got a digi digital image layer. So this is the what we're seeing on the screen here. So the display, the digital approximate, approximation based on the sampling of the analog image. The sampling layer is the samples um, of equal size are read from the analog image. So what we did before in both the black and white and the color where we where we determined whether the pixel was going to be on or not. So that's a sampling with our pixel layers. So a representation of the red, green, and blue light. And then a binary layer, the binary values behind the representation of the red, green, and blue. Let's take a look at how the computer works video. So and this is going to be covering binary and data. So some things we covered in the previous lessons. So some of it's going to be re going to be a review. The link for this video is in Google Classroom. If you're unable to listen, if the sound isn't very good or if the video skips here, um, we're going to go ahead here and play it. My name is Lamora Free, and I'm an engineer here at Adafruit Industries. And this is where I do engineering and design, and I design circuits for fashion and music and technology. My name is Federico Gomez Suarez, and I'm a software developer with Microsoft Hack for Good. And I look into using technology to help us solve some of the big social problems of our times. You may have heard that computers work on ones and zeros, or you may have seen scary looking visuals like this, but almost nobody today actually deals directly with these ones and zeros. But ones and zeros do play a big role in how computers work on the inside. Inside a computer are electric wires and circuits that carry all the information in a computer. How do you store or represent information using electricity? Well, if you have a single wire with electricity flowing through it, the signal can either be on 
or off. That's not a lot of choices, but it's a really important start. With one wire, we can represent a yes or no, true or false, a one or a zero, or anything else with only two options. This on-off state of a single wire is called a bit, and it's the smallest piece of information a computer can store. If you use more wires, you get more bits. More ones and zeros, with more bits, you can represent more complex information. But to understand that, we need to learn about something called the binary number system. In the decimal number system, we have 10 digits from 0 to 9, and that's how we've all learned to count. In the binary number system, we only have two digits, 0 and 1. With these two digits, we can count up to any number. Here's how this works. In the decimal number system we're all used to, each position in a number has a different value. There's the 1 position, the 10 position, the 100 position, and so on. For example, a 9 in the 100 position is a 900. In binary, each position also carries a value, but instead of multiplying by 10 each time, we multiply by 2. So there's the 1's position, the 2's position, the 4's position, the 8's position, and so on. For example, the number 9 in binary is 1001. To calculate the value, we add 1 times 8 plus 0 times 4 plus 0 times 2 plus 1 times 1. Almost nobody does this math because computers do it for us. What's important is that any number can be represented with only 1s and zeros, or by a bunch of wires that are on or off. The more wires you use, the larger the numbers you can store. With eight wires, you can store numbers between 0 and 255. That's eight ones. With just 32 wires, you can store all the way from 0 to over 4 billion. Using the binary number system, you can represent any number you like. But what about other types of information, like text, images, or sound? It turns out that all these things can also be represented with numbers. Think of all the letters in the alphabet. You could assign a number to each letter. A could be 1, B could be 2, and so on. You can then represent any word or paragraph as a sequence of numbers. And as we saw, these numbers can be stored as on or off electrical signals. Every word you see on every web page on your phone is represented using a system like this. Now, let's consider photos, videos, and all the graphics you see on a screen. All of these images are made out of teeny dots called pixels, and each pixel has a color. Each of the colors can be represented with numbers. When you consider that a typical image has millions of these pixels, and a typical video shows 30 images per second, and we're talking about a lot of data here. Every sound is basically a series of vibrations in the air. Vibrations can be represented graphically as a waveform. Any point on this waveform can be represented by a number. And this way, any sound can be broken down into a series of numbers. If you want higher quality sound, you would pick 32-bit audio over 8-bit audio. More bits means a higher range of numbers. When you use a computer to write code or make your own app, you're not dealing directly with these ones and zeros. But you will be dealing with images or sound or video. So if you want to understand how computers work on the inside, it all comes down to these simple ones and zeros and the electrical signals and the circuits behind them. They are the backbone of how all computers input, store, process, and output information. Okay, so this video, if you if you have any issues listening to it, this video is available in Google Classroom from um, 
this link here, how videos work. Okay, and that is the end for the end of today's lesson. Hopefully you all enjoyed that and you learned something interesting in it, out of it. And I'll speak to you again in our next lesson. Thank you all for joining.